That's good. Yeah, very good. All right. Well, listen, we, have a, 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 we want to start with a, uh, a person out there in the radio land. Why not? Uh, Vanessa writes in that uh, these are her results uh, of a treadmill stress test. Okay. Doesn't, she doesn't want to monopolize Dr. Foley's time or segment, but listens every single day and would like some advice. Okay. Uh, thank you in advance. Diagnosis one, chest pain at rest. Okay. Uh, diagnosis two, limited exercise capacity. Diagnosis three, no ECG changes for ischemia. What is that? For ischemia. Ischemia. Thank you. Blockage. Uh, diagnosis four, hypertensive. Blood pressure response. Response to exercise. Yeah. Uh, if my heart is fine, but I still feel pressure in my chest all of the time, right. what is my next course of action? So uh, I'm sure she's been to an internist because that's uh, you know how she got to the treadmill. Um, so continuing to talk to them about non non heart uh, causes of chest pain because there's a ton of stuff you know two pages long in the textbooks of just lists of things that cause chest pain, of which most of them are pretty benign and don't have anything to do with the heart. So we do stress tests to see. So we exercise someone on the treadmill, and we can see how you know. So the treadmill. Every three minutes gets faster and steeper, faster and steeper. You know, people say, well, you know, when, you know, when does it stop? It stops when the patient tells us to stop because it just, it will just keep getting steeper and, and faster. Um, and everyone eventually cries uncle. You, know, you don't, there's, you don't get to the, the end of the test is when you decided it ended. So in general, we say on a regular treadmill, you need to do at least six minutes or more. If you do under six minutes, that's a bad, that's bad. So that either means that you're in bad shape you know, physiological right. shape, or you have some cardiac disease. So under six minutes, in general, is not good. Now, if you, as you get older, your exercise capacity lessens, but, and I don't know how old Vanessa is. But what we do is we measure capacity. So, you know, we hope that a 30, 40, 50 year old person would go eight, eight and a half, nine minutes. Um, that would be good exercise capacity. Anything less than that, if you're six or seven, we say your exercise capacity is reduced. You're, you're out of shape, you need to get into shape. We measure blood pressure and heart rate at every phase, at every three minute stage. So if your blood pressure um, starts off hypertensive, then we say hypertensive to start, or if it starts off normal but shoots up, it should increase every every stage, but if it goes up more than what we would predict, then we say that's a hypertensive response. Your blood pressure went up way more than it should have. That could go along with all sorts of things. One, you could have high blood pressure. Two, you're, again, you're out of shape. Hyper, hypertensive responses to exercise can actually cause chest pain just because the hypertensive of the hypertension and so what we do is we treat the hypertension and sometimes if the pain goes away we're done if not then we would repeat the stress test on anti-hypertensive anti-blood pressure medications someone who's having continuous chest pain 24 hours a day it's not it's not going to be it's not a heart attack right um you know the types of pain that you get with a heart attack is is generally not at rest it's with exertion uh it can be a very minimal exertion but if you're starting to get pain at rest and you're really in trouble and you would have pain uh if you tried to do anything so it sounds to me like this is probably a person who like me and many people in America is not in great shape and she needs to get in better shape. She probably should see someone about treatment for high blood pressure. Uh, and then you know, begin to look for other non-heart causes of chest pains, so things like GI, you know, ulcers, uh, reflux disease, all sorts of things. All things that can feel like, what about, Absolutely. What about pressure on the chest? Is that something that's common too? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, Heart pain, you know, angina can be it can be your classic mid, you know, substernal chest pain. It can be pressure. It can be just arm pain. It can be my neck hurts. Right. Um, so it's it's uh, it's less the complaint as what else is going on with it. All right. If that makes if well, that makes sense. I hope that helps you out there in uh, Radio Land. We yeah. appreciate you thinking of us and And see a cardiologist to talk to your doctor about sitting down with a cardiologist to kind of go through things. But if you've had a totally normal stress test and you're having continuous pain, they may send you to a gastroenterologist for evaluation because again, reflux disease. Uh, the, the esophagus has smooth muscle in it mm -hmm. and the heart has smooth and cardiac muscle. So many of the same medications that we give people to relieve angina, which is heart pain, will also make esophageal pain go away. So, so even nitroglycerin... Under